Hello, I'm Cherry Gregg. And I'm Dan Koob. Coming up on Temple Update, the new school year is ringing in with a lot of new construction around campus. We'll tell you what's being built and what impact some of the construction is having on traffic and parking. Want to be on the team but not quite ready for D1 action? There are plenty of ways to play and we'll tell you how. And they're called the Broad Street Line, but the music they make sounds a lot better than Rush Hour on the subway. And in sports, a case for the defense. That and much more coming up on Temple Update. Coming up on Temple Update, I'll tell you how you can be an athlete without having to play at the D1 level. Hi, I'm Jennifer Lee and welcome to Season 22 of Temple Update. Hello and welcome to this semester's first edition of Temple Update. I'm Cherry Gregg. And I'm Dan Koob. We begin Temple Update with news on several construction projects that are underway as part of Temple's plan for campus development. The former site of the University Services Building will be transformed into a dormitory for roughly 1,600 students, including a dining facility and retail space along Broad Street. Pearson and McGonagall Halls will also be renovated to add another floor for recreational sports facilities, weight rooms, and classrooms. With class back in full swing, Temple students have gotten used to all of the construction going on around campus. What students may not know is that this is all a part of Temple's 2020 plan. Temple Update's Jennifer Lee has more on the new construction along North Broad. Last semester, Temple welcomed the newly renovated historic building, the Baptist Temple. But what exactly is the Temple 2020 plan and how did it unfold? So once we had a, a very good idea of where the university was going with its academic mission, Temple 2020 um, was a plan to address the facilities needs that would be required to make the academic plan a reality. This year, the Temple community can expect more innovative projects. Just recently, a groundbreaking ceremony took place for the $10 million architecture building. Other ongoing projects will focus on Broad Street. We're also doing a renovation of Pearson and McGonagall Halls right now. We're adding 120,000 square feet. We're actually going up uh, with an additional floor. We are just in the process, if you, if you went out there today, you would see machinery at Broad and C.B. Moore, and that's going to be the home of the new, uh, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,500 bed student residence hall. Temple has also rented space on top of Avenue North for a new fitness facility. Additional plans for this year include a new science building. In less than a month from now, Temple will start its groundbreaking on the new residence hall, as you can see behind me. Students can expect ongoing construction, but in the end, it will make for a better campus. Reporting for Temple Update, I'm Jennifer Lee. Many students have felt parking has been an issue on Temple's campus, and some believe the construction may add to the problem. Temple Update's Rachel Clooney has the latest on new traffic patterns affecting students. New construction around campus could cause changes for your commute this year. The renovation project of Pearson and McConnell Halls has caused street closings at Montgomery Ave and 15th Street. The expansion will include the addition of the third floor dedicated to new student activities. Some students feel that the road closings have added some frustrations in longer commutes. As, as far as like if you miss a turn or you usually have your own route like mapped out and a lot of times it will just be in your way and you have to go around the block and then there's like different stuff you have to deal with. Parking lot 3 at the corner at Broad Street and Cecil B. Moore has also been closed. The lot is under construction and will become a new residential complex for students. Students and staff are encouraged to plan alternative routes when traveling to campus as parking may become more difficult to find. Some students feel strongly about these changes. Um, it sucks because it's really hard to find parking and when you're done with classes it's a traffic jam because everybody's trying to get out with the parking garage right here and there's only one way you can go. So. The construction is expected to be completed by the end of the 2011 school year. Reporting from Temple Update, I'm Rachel Clooney. The Office of Parking Services recently implemented a new system to better reinforce the current parking and ticketing policies. 
Any vehicles with two or more citations will be towed at the owner's expense. Parking regulations will now be enforced 24 hours a day. Students can find more information at the Office of Parking Services. September was National Campus Safety Month. Temple participated by hosting its fifth annual emergency preparedness fair. The fair included meetings with the Office of Emergency Management, as well as the Philadelphia Fire Department and the Philadelphia Bomb Squad. Temple implemented the fair as a way to help students prepare for emergency situations. Temple is currently hosting the annual Fall American Red Cross Blood Drive. Students and faculty will have the opportunity to donate blood through November at various locations on campus. The Red Cross claims each donation can save up to three lives. And for more information, donors can visit the American Red Cross website. Temple's Fox School of Business is being recognized for its entrepreneurship programs. The business school located in, located in the recently opened Alter Hall was ranked 13th by the Princeton Review for undergraduates and 18th for graduates. Temple is the only Pennsylvania school to make the top 15. The Tyler School of Art started off the fall semester with a new exhibition. The exhibition titled Communist Conspiracy in Arts opened on September 8th. Several events are planned in association with the exhibit, including a lecture at Paley Library and a public discussion with the artist. All events are free and open to the public. The exhibition runs until November 6th at the Temple Gallery. The 2010 Homecoming Court has been announced. This year's court includes six candidates. You can learn more about the candidates and vote for your favorites by logging on to temple.edu slash homecoming. The new king and queen will be announced on October 16th. Temple University Libraries recently hosted a forum on immigration. The former Philadelphia Mayor John Street, Professor Jan Ting, and esteemed lawyer Elin Rosenberg discussed the recently implemented immigration laws in Arizona. The panel took questions from students and faculty regarding the morality of the legislation. This was the first in the scheduled series of discussions. A division of the Temple University Health System will be avoiding a work stoppage for at least the next few years. University employed nurses and nurse practitioners represented by the Pennsylvania Association of Staff Nurses and Allied Professionals voted to approve a new contract. The new agreement extends through 2014. Police. Police are reviewing surveillance tapes in hopes of finding a suspect in a deadly assault near Temple University Hospital. Nathaniel Dotson of West Philadelphia was pronounced dead an hour after being assaulted outside the hospital. Police say surveillance tapes reveal a female suspect and the victim arguing before walking around the corner. A short time later, only the woman returned. The police investigation is still ongoing. Former Temple senior Nicholas Hasselbeck recently pled guilty to aggravated assault and leaving the scene of an accident. The plea stems from an April hit and run that injured Temple Law student Tony Fultz. Hasselback faces up to four and a half years in jail. His sentencing is scheduled for November 22nd. Still to come on Temple Update, John Mueller will take us behind the scenes of some club sports on Temple's campus. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Here with this week's health report is Veronica Wisely. Veronica, I hear there is an issue with people who put their laptops on their laps. Yes, there is. Thank you, Cherry. We all know how hot laptops can get, but researchers are now saying that leaving your laptop for too long can cause toasted skin syndrome. Researchers say the heat a laptop gives off can easily hit 125 degrees, causing burns as well as skin discoloration. They suggest laptop users place a pillow or laptop cooler between themselves and the computer. While there is no sleeping tight for Temple students living on campus, yes, the bed bugs are biting. A recent outbreak has infiltrated campus. Students have reported sudden rashes and bites on their bodies. Bed bugs reside along mattress edges, box springs, small cracks, textiles, and furniture. The bugs have flat, oval-shaped bodies and are often mistaken for cockroaches. The extermination process is not easy and must be handled by a certified health control specialist. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Breast cancer is a disease that has been traditionally associated with women. Although not as common, men do suffer from the disease. 
Studies have found 79% of men who are at high risk of breast cancer did not know that men could be diagnosed with the disease. The remaining 43% said that having the disease would cause them to question their masculinity. Along with the fall, flu season has returned. To help with the prevention, Temple University Health Services is offering free flu shots to all students. Campuses offering the vaccination include Maine, Ambler, and the Health Sciences. Visits are walk-in or can be scheduled on Temple's website. So, so if you guys haven't um, already gotten your flu shots, make sure to stop by the Student Center on Thursday, October 14th from 8 a.m. to noon. Veronica, that's great advice. Thank Thanks, you. Veronica. Looking for something to do on campus? Well, there are over 25 athletic clubs here at Temple. Here's Update's John Mailer with more information on that. That was the women's lacrosse club team, one of the 27 club sports Temple has to offer. Other club sports include roller hockey, ice hockey, and gymnastics. All of the sports clubs provide much more than just competition. It's really fun and it keeps me active and it's just a reason to make a lot of friends. I've made a lot of friends playing on the team. Some sports hold tryouts for students interested in the club, but others, such as the gymnastics club, do not. We encourage kids of all skill levels to come and try out. It's a great way to try a new sport and if you don't like it, then at least you try it. Sports such as men's and women's lacrosse practice right here at Geezy Field, while other sports such as fencing and gymnastics take place inside the gym at McGonagall Hall. Fundraising is a huge part of a sport club organization. Sport club's coordinator, Sarah Newton, explained that club members even get to compete in a sport that they usually don't get to play. They all participate in the volleyball fundraiser, so they put in donations, um, they do it per point, so you know everyone mixes up on different teams, and 100% goes back to each club. Not everyone is made for Division I athletics, which makes club sports existence on Temple's campus very important. Sport clubs allows you to go outside the school, compete on a, a higher level than intramurals, but um, where you're not tied into all the constraints of a Div Division I um, program. To sign up for club sport, students can visit Suite 102 inside McGonagall Hall or log on to temple.edu slash campusrec. Reporting for Temple Update, I'm John Mailer.